In addition to the flat roof snow load that is applied as a uniform area load in the field of the roof, it's critical to consider the drifting effects of snow. Snow will drift onto windward and leeward steps of the roofs, adjacent structures, and parapets. The surcharge load due to snow drifting is approximated by a triangle and therefore must be applied as tapered area loads in RESA floor. Here in this model, we already have a uniform area load applied to demonstrate the flat roof snow load, and I'm going to demonstrate how to apply the tapered area loads for the snow drift. It's important to note that the tapered area loads are always additive to area load definitions below them. They never negate nor supersede other area loads. So first what I wanna do, um, I'm really just gonna focus in on this corner here. Uh, right now I've got the area load displayed. I'm gonna go ahead and disable that here so we can get a clear uh, view of the floor plan. I'm going to first start by uh, drawing some construction grids. So I'm gonna demonstrate how to apply snow drift here, uh, here in the corner of our building where we have a parapet and we can anticipate snow drifting up against the parapet. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to come to the insert. I'm gonna insert a drawing grid so we can go ahead and insert a construction line. And I'm gonna go ahead and choose the offset from option. From the drop down list, I'll choose wall since the boundary of my building is walls here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do a five foot offset. So that would be the calculation that I would have done uh, based off of the AAC7 snowdrift calculation. So I'll just go ahead and choose to apply this. And so what I need to do now is just select the wall and then that is going to generate the grid line for me. So you can see here in that light gray tone, that five foot offset. So we're gonna go ahead and apply one down here as well. Okay, so now that we have our construction grids outlining where our area load is going to be, so what we wanna do now is we wanna go ahead and come to our draw area loads icon to go ahead and begin drawing our tapered area loads. Here you'll see we have the option to choose tapered area loads option from the radio button here. So we'll go ahead and select that. And we've got an option to insert a base magnitude and a peak magnitude. So uh, what do we want our base magnitude to be? Let me go ahead and close this real quick. If we recall, let me go ahead and display here our snow loads again. So this is what our snow loads look like. Uh, and if I come to my area load definitions, we'll see that we've got 22 PSF snow load here. And the way that we have this drawn is all the way out to the boundaries of our parapet. So if I come back to my tapered area loads option here, my base magnitude is actually gonna be the same as my flat roof snow load. So I'm gonna leave that value as zero since the tapered area loads are always going to be additive to the uniform area load that is already applied. Uh, I don't wanna put 22 here because then that is going to make the applied load at the base of my tapered area load 44 PSF. And so we don't wanna double dip there. So I'm gonna leave my base magnitude at zero. I am going to make my peak magnitude, if I calculated my peak magnitude to be 46 PSF, according to AAC7 calculations, uh, if my base magnitude is 22, then I could go ahead and subtract 22 from 46, and that's gonna give us the 24 PSF uh, peak magnitude additive to that base 22. So snow load is the category of which I'm assigning this. Should you have any other application where you might need a tapered area load, you do have the option to assign it a different load category as well. Snow load just tends to be the most common. So now that we have this input, I'm gonna go ahead and choose to apply. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna try and draw this actually more as a trapezoidal load so that we can make sure we uh, incorporate the load drifting into the corner as well. So my first click here is gonna be at the corner and then my second click is going to be up here at top. And that first and second click there, that is going to be the definition for the base magnitude of my load. This third and now fourth click is going to be the definition for the peak magnitude. And you can see a summary down here, we've got zero and 24. 
And so then similarly, let me go ahead and apply it at this corner here. So I'll do my first click, my second click, third and fourth to define the peak. And we can see there that it's again, zero PSF and then 24 here at the peak. And we've got that corner taken care of. So then you can obviously see we've got that flat roof as well as the uh, tapered area loads here in the corner. So what I'm going to go ahead and actually do here is I'm going to run a quick solution and that way we can look at a detail report for one of these beams here and we should be able to actually view the tapered area load experienced on the beam. So I'm just going to choose to view the detail report for this beam here. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to switch to, let's just view just that snow load here. So as we can see on this beam, you actually see that flat roof snow load coming all the way across. And then you've got that tapered triangular surcharge load due to snow drift here. So that verifies that we did in fact apply our drift correctly and the beam is experiencing that load. So that is how you apply tapered area loads and Risa floor. For more information, please visit our website at risa.com.